गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर जयदेन आमदार एंड टूडे आई विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग अ केस रिपोर्ट ऑन द प्री नेटल डायग्नोसिस ऑफ एबस्टीन नॉर्मली एट सेकेंड ट्राइमेस्टर अल्ट्रासाउंड स्कैन to begin with epstein's anomaly is a rare complex cyanotic congenital heart disorder which primarily involves the tricuspid valve apparatus and the right side of the heart the pathophysiology implicated here is the failure of delamination of tricuspid valve leaflets which gives an appearance of apical displacement of the valve along with a small functional right ventricle echocardiography is the investigation of choice for diagnosis however with careful sonographic evaluation detection of this anomaly during routine second trimester ultrasound screening is also possible the affected neonates will present at birth with cyanosis and congestive cardiac failure which may prove to be rapidly fatal without prompt surgical intervention the aim of this case report is to emphasize the importance of screening for cardiac anomalies during routine obstetric ultrasound in the second trimester and to demonstrate usg findings in a fetus with epstein's anomaly to facilitate the antenatal diagnosis of the same i present a case of a 31 year old primi gravida with 23 weeks of gestation who presented to our opd for routine second trimester obstetric ultrasound scan also known as the level 2 anomaly scan patient was vitally stable at the time of examination a 2d ultrasound examination was performed using a 3.5 megahertz trans abdominal curvilinear probe on the philips clearview 550 ultrasound equipment at our institution the ultrasound showed a single live intrauterine fetus of gestational age 23 weeks and 2 days with adequate liker however the cardiac screening ultrasound revealed the following malformations cardiomegaly with an enlarged right atrium apical displacement of the tricuspid valve decreased volume of the functional right ventricle with dilated and thinned out part of right ventricle lying above the annulus which is also known as the atrialization of the right ventricle and tricuspid regurgitation was detected on color doppler based on the above findings a provisional diagnosis of fetal epstein's anomaly was made which was further confirmed by targeted fetal echocardiography now i would like to show some ultrasound images to enhance our understanding of the topic coming to figure 1 and 2 Uh, this is the four chamber view of the heart which shows a grossly dilated right atrium as we can see in these both figures the figure 3 and 4 shows a magnified view of the four chambered heart and here the mitral valve as well as the tricuspid valve has been denoted with the help of arrows note the apical displacement of the tricuspid valve in relation to the mitral valve and the dilated thinned out part of the right ventricle which lies above the annulus and is known as the atrialization of right ventricle which is characteristic of the epstein's anomaly in this figure we see color doppler image which shows aliasing of color at the tricuspid valve region and denotes tricuspid regurgitation coming to the case discussion epstein's anomaly is a cyanotic congenital cardiac anomaly which was first described by wilhelm epstein as a rare type of insufficiency of the tricuspid valve it has a reported incidence of 1 in 20000 live births and accounts for less than 1% of all congenital cardiac anomalies the primary pathology here involves the abnormal attachment of tricuspid valve leaflets incomplete delamination of the proximal portion causes stuttering of the valve leaflets to the right ventricular free wall and interventricular septum this gives rise to characteristic morphological features in the anomaly like right atrial enlargement apical displacement of the tricuspid valve functionally small right ventricle the thinned out and dilated portion of the right ventricle seen above the 
tricuspid valve annulus is known as the atrialization of the right ventricle. Due to tethering and redundancy of the valve leaflets, there is dilatation of the tricuspid valve annulus which gives rise to tricuspid regurgitation. The Epstein anomaly is a spectrum of malformations which may range from minimal apical displacement of the valve leaflet to a muscular shelf between the inlet and trabecular zone of the right ventricle. This depends on where the process of delamination has been arrested. Carpentier's classification is widely used in Epstein's anomaly. It is based on the volume of functional right ventricle and degree of anterior leaflet motion of the tricuspid valve. The disease has been divided into four types from A to D in increasing order of severity. The image in the left is a pictorial depiction of the failure of delamination, which is the pathophysiology behind the Epstein's anomaly. The valve leaflets are derived from the delamination of inner portion of the right ventricle and failure of this process causes the Epstein's anomaly. Therefore, it is a spectrum which uh, might have infinite variability. To the right side, we see Carpentier's classification. In type A, the volume of true right ventricle is adequate and as we go downwards to type D, almost near complete atrialization of the right ventricle is seen. Coming to the etiology, most cases of the Epstein's anomaly are sporadic. However, certain genetic and environmental factors have been implicated in its causation. Few studies have revealed the MYH7 gene as well as cardiac transcription factor NKX 2.5 mutations may be a causative factor in the Epstein's anomaly. The environmental factors include maternal benzodiazepine use and lithium ingestion in the first trimester which is used in prophylaxis and treatment of bipolar disorders mainly. Epstein's anomaly may be associated with other cardiac malformations which most commonly includes the atrial septal defect or persistent foramen ovale. Others may include ventricular septal defect, right ventricular outflow tract obstruction, pulmonary stenosis and atresia. Fetal echocardiography is the investigation of choice for antenatal detection of Epstein's anomaly. The four-chambered view of the heart serves as an important tool for diagnosis. Tricuspid regurgitation can be demonstrated using color Doppler and spectral waveforms. The presence of cyanosis, severe tricuspid regurgitation and right-sided heart failure in neonates necessitates surgical intervention. Most neonates with symptomatic Epstein's anomaly at birth cannot survive for long without surgical treatment. The surgical treatment includes tricuspid valve replacement or repair and may also uh, involve correction of the associated malformations like surgical resection of the atrialized right ventricle and thinned out right atrium. Complete repair of the anomaly correlates with a good survival outcome in the symptomatic neonates. Thus, prenatal USG allows for appropriate management, planning of delivery at a tertiary care hospital with adequate facilities for early neonatal intervention, which overall incre increases the survival chances. To conclude, Epstein's anomaly is a rare type of cyanotic congenital heart disease and is characterized by malformation of the tricuspid valve and right side of the heart. Echocardiography is the investigation of choice for diagnosis of this condition. However, it can also be detected with careful sonographic evaluation during the routine second trimester ultrasound scan. The apical displacement of the uh, tricuspid valve, right atrial enlargement, functionally small right ventricle and associated atrialization of the right ventricle are key features for its diagnosis. Symptomatic units present at birth with rapidly worsening features like cyanosis and right heart failure and mortality is imminent without prompt surgical treatment. This underlines the importance of early diagnosis of this anomaly in prenatal USG in order to facilitate the antenatal and perinatal management of the affected babies and intervention in early neonatal period.
and this improves the overall prognosis. That's all from my side for today. Thank you.